Happy morning, church. God is good. And all the time, amen, amen, amen. So this morning we are in our third part of our um, My Lord and My God series. And for this morning, we will be talking about my testimony. Okay. According to the general definition, testimony, it is an evidence or information provided by a witness based on facts. It relies on a person's credibility. Now, the Bible, in its uh, Greek word, martoreo, it means to affirm that one has seen or heard or experienced something, or that he knows it because uh, he knows it because taught by divine revelation or inspiration. Question is how important is our testimony? How important is our testimony? We know for a fact that we are all a social being, correct? And uh, God does not create us to live alone. And one of the very first problems that God solved was the problem of loneliness. Uh, God doesn't want man to be alone, so he created Eve to be his uh, companion. God creates us to share our feelings. God created us to share our emotions and even our frustrations. So we are not to live alone and that we are a social being. And being a, being a social being at that, we are influenced by each other. And uh, the uh, testimony, it plays an important role in influencing our thoughts, influencing our decisions, and influencing how we, we act on certain things. And you may not notice it, the majority of our decisions are actually influenced by testimony. It's influenced by others. If you would be mindful of your decisions, it's actually influenced by others, by other testimony. Now, for instance, if you're looking for a place to dine in, right? a place to dine, you know, what you're going to do, what people normally do is we, uh, we search the internet for, we Google it, for the best place to eat in San Jose. And then what you will do is you will look at all the reviews, correct? If this place is a good place to dine or if this place is not a good place to dine. And uh, those people who've been there, they would put up a good ratings. And they will put up five stars, four stars, depending on their experience. And they would probably leave a comment. And that comment is their testimony. And we would be reading that. And we, would, we will be basing our uh, decisions, our choices, based on those comments, based on those testimonies. Now, another example. Let's take, for example, uh, shoes. If you are particular with shoes, and if you are looking to buy one, you know, and for me, I'm, I'm very particular with shoes. And I, seeing many people, they are, most people nowadays are using Air Force One, one of the most familiar and um, famous uh, shoes out there. And um, without even talking to these people, and without getting their testimony about how comfortable the shoes uh, are, you know, because you are seeing most people, most teenagers, most adults, actually even in their 60s, I have seen people wearing Air Force One. You would be tempted <clears throat> to buy Air Force One because you're seeing a lot of people using it, whatever age brackets, you know, and just by mere wearing the shoes, just by mere wearing the brand, that is their testimony. 
and we are influenced by that. The more people that we see using the brand, the more influenced we are in trying that brand. Another example, ladies. Makeup, you know, um, dresses, you know. You would be uh, looking for reviews if those things are really good. You, know, you will be asking your friends how they feel about wearing them. Right? So we are looking for testimony. We are looking for comments. We are looking for those important details that they will tell us so that we can make our own decision. Okay? And it is good to do your homework. There's nothing wrong about it. Okay? So the more people are using the products, and the more louder their testimonies are, the bigger the chance it will, it will influence our choice. Correct? And why do we look for others for our decision? Because of uncertainty. Because we are uncertain. Why are we looking for the reviews for all those restaurants wherein we would like or we are looking for to dine is because we are uncertain if that place is good or not. So the reason why we look for others for our decisions is because number one of uncertainty. Okay. We have never tried it before. We have never dined at that place before. So we are looking for testimony. So we tend to look for others for answers. So why? Testimonies are important. Number one is because they are social proof or they are social evidence. Remember our definition of testimony, they are evidence. So as a social proof, it, is, it was popularized by psychologist Robert Cialdini. He maintains that a person who does not know what the proper behavior for a certain situation is, we look to other people to imitate what they are doing and to provide guidance for his actions. So we look for testimonies. We look for others to guide us. We look for others so that we could make our decisions and our choices. But of course, we must be vigilant. We must be vigilant as we try to seek a pattern for our behavior and a pattern for our choices. Now the Bible warns us, it warns us that we must be very careful. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Now this verse, it encourages us towards self-examination and caution us in following the crowd as we fulfill our desires and our intentions. Now, the Bible also warns us to be careful in following the majority, for we might be going the wrong direction. In Exodus chapter 23, verse 2, you shall not follow the crowd in wrong doing. Most of the times, we are influenced by the crowd. The Bible warns us that we must not follow the crowd in wrong doing. That's why we are given wisdom by the Lord to discern what is right from what is wrong. So we must be vigilant and we must be very careful in looking for others for our decisions. So the second important thing about testimony is you get the word out, all right? You get the word out to other people. You let others know of the important things that you have in you, that you believe that could change their lives. Okay? Now, what you have could be a service. What you have could be a product. What you have also could be a process that you believe that could change other people. 
And because it worked for you, you've tried the product, you've been using the services, you, you've tried the process, and it worked for you, so therefore, you want to let others try it because it benefits you and you believe that it will benefit them as well. So having said that, you become what? You become a walking advertisement. Correct. So you become an advertisement. You are advertising what you have. Now in any, in any business for that matter, an advertisement is really important. You know, people go to the social media to advertise. They are exploiting the social media to get the word out to get the things that they have, the products, services, process that they have, they are using the social media. When you open your Facebook account, even if you're not subscribed to this product, it will pop up. Okay? You will see those products, those services in the Facebook and in the social media because they see the value in advertising. Now, are we aware that we are faced with thousands of ads every day. The moment you open, open your radio, your TV, you will be bombarded with so many advertising, trying to get your attention, trying to get your hard-earned money to buy and try their products, services, or process. And when you go out of the road, when you drive, you will see many billboards, small, medium, large billboards. You will see signages all over trying to get our attention. If you go to the malls, you will see people handing out flyers, handing out samples. If you go to Costco, there are free tastes, right, of the products. There are free samples. You know, I, I keep on trying to remember what day that they are doing the samples, the pre-tasting. Because at one time, you know, I got so full. Just trying different products. You see? So they're trying to, to lure you, in a way, to buy those products. Now, basically, anywhere we go, there's an advertisement. Now, in a cutthroat market, it is hard to do business without advertisement. So number two, our testimony is our advertisement. Doing business without advertising is like winking at a girl in the dark. You know what you are doing, but nobody else does. <laughs> You're winking at the dark. Now, if there is one thing that the Bible tells us not to advertise, it is our self-glorification. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, it tells us, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. Truly, I tell you, they already have their full reward. And in Matthew chapter 6, verse 3, but when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Now, in both verses, the context is all about, you know, advertising what you are doing to receive the honor and glory from men. That's the context. It is not about God and his glory, but it is about me myself and I getting all the glory from all of you. And that's what God doesn't want us to do. God doesn't want us to do something with the intention of getting the glory from men. We must do things for his glory and for his glory alone. And God wants us to be a walking billboard. To be a walking billboard, a walking advertisement. 
And of course, before you become a walking billboard and a walking advertisement, you must firmly believe in what you have. You must firmly believe in what you have. What you have is Jesus. What you have is his word that saved you and that you want to share that word because you know that the other person, a sinner for that matter, just like you before, could also be saved. And that it could change a person's life. You must believe that in your heart before you become a walking advertisement. What you have is God's power. You have in your hand God's power for salvation. And you need to share that gospel. Now I want you to, 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 to kindly see yourself as a, a, a vessel of God. As a vessel of God delivering, you know, trying to deliver his message of hope, his message of mercy, his message of love, and his message of salvation. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, tells us, We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. You see that you are a vessel of God that contains what? A great treasure. Do you see yourself as a vessel of God containing that great treasure? Now, a vessel, a vessel that contains a great treasure. Now, another question is, what is this great treasure Paul was referring to? In our scripture reading, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 13, 14, and 15, but we continue to preach. Verse 14, we know that God who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and present us to himself together with you. All of this is for your benefit. So the great treasure that Paul was referring to is the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and what comes with it. What comes with it is that you too will be resurrected with him at the proper time. We all will be resurrected at the proper time. And verse 15 tells us that this is for what? This is for your benefit. That's why in verse 13, Paul, he said, we continue to preach. That's why Paul never faltered in continuing uh, preaching the gospel because it benefits him and now it benefits for your benefits. So he was advertising. His testimony was so loud because he wanted to get the word out to all the people. <clears throat> now let's continue reading verse 15. All of this is for your benefit. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. So the more we give our testimony about the gospel, about the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the more it reaches more and more people. But the less we talk about it, how could it reach more and more people? So the more we talk about it, it is heard by many people there will be what? There will be great thanksgiving. And God will receive more and more glory. Amen to that. So Paul, he continuously, uh, he, he, he became a walking advertisement for God. Everywhere he went. Everywhere. He was never ashamed of the gospel. For he know the gospel is the power of God. 
and to salvation. In Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Make your testimony be heard because you have a great treasure in you and that this great treasure that is in you, it reaches more and more people for the glory of God. And as you go in your, your daily life, your daily lives, your, your life, make your life worthy of your calling. Try to magnify, magnify in your life or through your life what Christianity is all about. If you are saying, you are telling that you are a Christian, then magnify that Christianity in you to the way you live so that when people see you, they will not see you and glorify you, but they will see you and glorify the Father in heaven because you embody what Christianity really means. Again, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about Jesus Christ and his kingdom. Share the gospel, the hope that it brings, the mercy that it brings, the love the Father has on us, and the salvation that it brings, because it glorifies God. Become God's advertisement. Now, as our testimony, as our testimony is our advertisement of God, what we are doing is we are actually endorsing God. When people are advertising, they are endorsing the products, the services, the process, etc. So when we are advertising God, we are endorsing God. Now, the third importance of testimony is endorsement. We are endorsing. Endorsement, an act of giving one's public approval or support for someone or something. That is the general definition. Now, we said all uh, at the start of our lesson that the... Uh, uh, the testimony lies on what? On a person's credibility. It relies on a person's credibility. And this is important as we give our testimony about Jesus Christ. Because people will read your life. People will try to see your life in relation to what you are saying. And they would connect what you are saying to how you live. So as you endorse God's word, as you endorse Jesus Christ, they will look at how you live. They will look at how credible you are. If you are living contrary to what you are saying, they might not listen to you. They might not listen to you because you are living a double standard life. And that's not what, what testimony is all about. Testimony is about being credible. Being a credible witness for the Lord. See? In Acts chapter 5, 38 and 39. So in the present case, I advise you. Uh, this was Gamaliel talking to the Sanhedrin and to the other Jewish leaders. Leave this man alone. Let them go. For, their for if their purpose or endeavor is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. Now, the story leading to this verse was about the apostles. Uh, who were The apostles were put um, to prison. Because of preaching Jesus Christ. Then all of a sudden, during the night, an angel appeared and opened up their cell doors. And the angel told them, go out to the temple courts and preach. So the apostles went out and they were preaching during the night. So when the guards, the captain of the guards, were, were asked to bring the apostles, the captain of the guards were asked, 
by the Sanhedrin, by the court, to bring the apostles into their midst. So when the guards went to, to get the apostles in their prison, he was shocked. They were not there. The doors were, were open. And then uh, go into the temple courts. The guard saw the apostles preaching at the temple courts. So again, they seized the apostles and they brought them to the Sanhedrin. Okay? And then uh, during those meetings, Peter stood up and gave his a speech about Jesus Christ, about the death of Jesus, and about the resurrection of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. And the Sanhedrin, the high court, they got mad at them. They got mad at them, and they decided to put them to death. Then a man named Gamaliel stood up. He stood up. He is a well-known uh, teacher, a rabbi. He stood up. And he said to them, don't do anything to this man. And he mentioned two names. Remember, remember these two names, Judas and Judas the Galilean, not Judas the Apostles of Christ. You remember those two names? You remember, they claim to be somebody, they claim to be you know, a messianic person. They, they got followers, but soon they died and all their followers scattered and never heard again from them. Now, Gamaliel told the Sanhedrin and the Jewish law, or the Jewish leaders, don't do anything to this man. Because if they are from God, if this man are credible witness of God, you may even find yourselves fighting against God. Now in verse 32, let's go back to verse 32, 532. We are a witnesses of these things. Peter and the apostles, we are witnesses of these things and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. The apostles are witnesses. Their credibility hangs on their being able to personally witness Jesus and his resurrection. Now who could better endorse Jesus to the people than the apostles? They were a credible witness. If you go and read Acts chapter 2, many believed the apostles because of the work of the Holy Spirit in them. The people saw through the apostles the Holy Spirit is working in them. The people saw their knowledge of the, the scriptures. The people saw their testimony about Jesus, being with Jesus, and seeing Jesus alive. So that made them credible witness. That's why 3,000 were baptized at that day during the Pentecost. So it made them a great endorser of Jesus Christ. People believed because they were what? They were credible. They were credible. Now let us ask ourselves, am I a credible endorser of Jesus? Or better yet, let us first ask ourselves, am I endorsing Jesus? Am I witness or witnessing for Jesus? Am I testifying for Jesus? Am I sharing Jesus. So if you are sharing Jesus, now let's go back to the, to the first question. Am I a credible witness or am I a credible endorser of Jesus? Is my, my actions or my words and my actions align with each other? Now here's another question. What do we want to achieve in our testimony about Jesus? What do you want to achieve? The answer is we want people to believe in us and be one with Jesus. That is what we want to achieve. We want people to engage. We want them to think. We want them to, to analyze 
and we want them to make a choice whether they would serve Jesus or they would continue in their sinful life. We want them to act and we want them to react. So the fourth important thing about our testimony is we want to reap a harvest. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 22, To the weak I became weak, to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. You know, for all those companies, the reason why they advertise and the reason why they do marketing campaign is for one reason alone. Just for one reason. Their reason is to make a sales big enough to make them, to bring or give them a profit. Because you might be making sales, but you're not making profit. You're just break even. Or probably your, your sales is much lower than your expenses. So instead of gaining profit, you are having a net loss. So that's the focus of most co or all companies is to make big enough sales to earn them a profit. And that's what we want also to achieve. By principle, spiritually, that's the same. Paul was trying his best to, to win even some for the Lord. That's the reason why we go out, why we are testifying, because by the Lord's grace and mercy, we want to reap a harvest for God's kingdom. But of course, whether we reap a harvest or not, our mandate is to preach the gospel. Our mandate is to testify about Jesus Christ. Our mandate is to share the gospel. Remember, we have, uh, I've shared a lesson with that to all of you. And that is our mandate. Plant the seed, the word of God, in the hearts of individuals. And by the Lord's mercy and grace, that seed that you planted will blossom, will, will bloom in that person. And he would realize that he needed the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we accomplish that by our testimony. As Paul made his testimony before King Agrippa, now listen to what he said. The, the conversation between Paul and Agrippa. Then Agrippa said to Paul, Can you persuade me in such a short time to become a Christian? Short time or long, Paul replied, I wish to God that not only you, but all who hear me this day may become what I am except for this change. The very purpose of our testimony is to have this great treasure that is in us get across to everybody whom we would have the opportunity to mingle with. To get that message across. And that is, we accomplish that by our testimony. And this is how important our testimony is about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We get the message across. Can you imagine? How can you get the message of the, the, the great treasure that is in you without mentioning it to somebody? Without even opening your mouth? You cannot get those message across. The only way we can do that is by testifying, by giving our testimony. When Thomas said, my Lord and my God, it was his personal testimony about Jesus Christ. Knowing Jesus, knowing Jesus Christ personally, being with Jesus and seeing Jesus resurrected, he uttered those words, my Lord and my God. He experienced the saving grace of Jesus, the power of God to the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It made him a credible witness for the Lord. In John 4, 39, many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. 
John 4.39 tells us that many Samaritans believe Jesus because of what? Because of the woman's testimony. The woman experienced the omniscience of Jesus by knowing her relationships. Okay. Jesus opened up and tell this woman about his, about her relationship. He experienced the omniscience of Jesus. And having experienced the power of Jesus, she went to the town and testified about Jesus. With her testimony, many Samaritans believe in Jesus Christ. Now, we can also see these individuals when Jesus uh, uh, healed many people and they cannot contain themselves to give their testimonies about Jesus. Mark 7, 36 and 37. Jesus ordered, ordered them not to tell anyone. But the more he ordered them, the more widely they proclaimed it. The people were utterly astonished and said, He has done all these things well. He makes even the deaf hear and the mute speak. They cannot contain themselves because they experienced the power of Jesus. And we should be doing like that. We should be doing what these people did because of the healing power of God, because of the answered prayer, because of all those pleas that we made to Jesus and we experience it firsthand. We must go out and share those testimony of ours to our fellow. You know, brothers and sisters, we, for I'm, I'm sure that God heard your prayers. God answered your prayers. In our darkest moments, you know, we call upon the Lord. We call upon Him for healing. We call upon Him for grace. We call upon Him for mercy. We beg Him to forgive us. And I'm sure God heard and granted our prayers. Now, if you were to tell your story about the grace of Jesus in your life, what would you tell your family? What would you tell your children? What would you tell your neighbors? If Jesus changed your life, why not share that experience to your family? Why not share that experience to your children, to your neighbor, and to your friends? Now look at yourself today and ask this question. Are you happier today than when you did not have Jesus? Are you happier today with Jesus than when you didn't have him? If you are happier today, why not share that happiness? Why not share the reason why you are happy today? And the reason for your happiness is because of Jesus. What is it that made you stay with Jesus for all these years? Why are you still a Christian up to this very moment? You know, these things, these are our testimony. These things are your story about the goodness of Jesus. And those stories should be told. Don't keep it to yourself. Our verbal testimony is so important since God has, ha, has chosen our hearing to produce faith. So our verbal testimony is so important. Why? Because faith comes from what? Faith comes from hearing. And that is why your testimony is so important. Your verbal testimony is so important. Now finally, Paul said, for our proud confidence is this, the testimony of our conscience, that in holiness and godly sincerity, not in fleshly wisdom, but in the grace of God, we have conducted ourselves in, world, in the world and especially toward you. We become a powerful endorser of God when we align our actions with our words. Our testimony becomes so powerful by living a godly life. People 
they will see and they will read your life and they would compare your life with the words that you are saying. We become a credible witness for God. And I encourage you to share your story, to share your testimony to others. You know, give them hope through your testimony. God could have taken my life many years ago when I was not ready. He could have taken my life. But God was so gracious to me that he let me live and use my life to testify to others and see the day that my children and my wife accepted Jesus Christ. And that was a wonderful moment to see. Nothing on earth could be better than that for me. To see my children and my wife accepted the Lord. See? And if God had taken my life, you know, during those years, I don't know what could have been to my family. But one thing, one thing that I'm sure, 100%, if God took my life then, 100%, I will be in hell. I will be in hell. That's why right at this very moment, I always thank God for his mercy and patience with me. You know, I may, I may not know some or many of your, your questions, but one thing I know, and this I can answer, is that Jesus loved me so. And that also, he loved you too. And that's my very short testimony about myself. Now, my brothers and sisters, God is using you to let the word out. God is using you. Maybe you still have family, you know, members who are not yet believers. You know, think about them and share your own testimony about Jesus. And from those who have not yet accepted the Lord that are here today, I believe that it is no accident why you are here. It is not an accident that you are still alive today. I want you to think that you are alive today because God wants you to come to him. And it is a blessing, an opportunity to come to him right now. Make amends with God. Repent, be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, and forever live your life with God. Now the gospel is yours, my dear brothers and sisters and friends. I thank you for your listening ears. Shall we all stand as we sing the song of invitation? <laughs>